If you look carefully at a propeller for a gas engine like this one, there's a couple of things you're going to notice about it. First, it's, it's pretty beefy, you know, very strong, relatively heavy, but also the blades are thick. So if you look at the airfoil shape of the blade, it's going to be like maybe 13%. And there's a couple of reasons why they're designed this way. A gas engine ha tends to have a lot of vibration. So the propeller has to be relatively beefy just so that it can withstand that. But also they turn quickly. So again, you need a strong propeller to be able to take a lot of RPMs. But when you're turning quickly, a thicker blade actually has an advantage and it has to do with the Reynolds number, not, get, not to get into all of those details. But uh, so a propeller like this will work very well on a gas engine and you can use it on an electric motor but it's just not going to work as well. Uh, for an electric motor you need a propeller like this one which is clearly, clearly labeled that as electric and it's very light and uh, it, it actually has an under camber blade. You can see there's like a halo on the back of the blade and that, that's optimized for the relatively low RPMs that an electric motor will, will turn it at. Okay, so, so you, can, you can use a gas one on an on, on electric motor, but it's just not optimal. Um, if, if you fly small electrics like this one, you may want to consider using a, a so-called prop saver. You know, you, you can see it there, I don't know how well. But the prop saver is, is like a rubber band that is actually holding the propeller in place. So if, if you hit the ground and you crash, the propeller can just bend out of the way and it's not gonna break. And, and it's, it's, it actually has saved me a lot of propellers over the years. There's a couple of downsides with, with a prop saver is that the main problem with them is that they don't last that long. You know, it's, it's a black, uh, it's almost like a black rubber band and many times I'm flying a model and I lose power and I think, oh, you know, the battery ran down. And then I bring the airplane in for the landing and I, and I notice that it doesn't have a propeller. Because what happens is that as the airplane was flying, the rubber band broke, the propeller takes off, you know, it's a black propeller, so you can't even see it. In fact, I, I have never been able to find a propeller that I've lost this way. And, uh, and that's that, so you need to replace the propeller anyway. These, those black uh, perhaps every rubber bands, you, you can go to a place like Harbor Freight and buy something like this, which is just an O-ring kit. So you, you get a, a ton of different sizes of, of the black rubber bands. So there's no problem getting them. Um, the other thing that, that, you, uh, that you have to do when you go flying is that always bring a spare propeller. Even, even if you, know, you think, oh, it's a grass field, I'm only going to do a short flight. Always bring a spare because the propellers always break when you least expect them to. And the other thing is that even if two propellers look identical to each other, these two propellers basically look the same. Uh, of course, one of them is a little bit bigger diameter. But if you if you run them on the motor on, on the motor, they actually behave very differently. So if you're going to be pushing your motor to what you think is the limit of the current that it can handle, you have to measure the current on the ground with a with a watt meter or something along those lines, and yeah, you know, it's going to unload a little bit in the air, so, so you, may want, you, know, you can go right up to the edge because in the air the current is going to be a little bit less. But definitely don't go beyond and you, you know, play it safe and have fun until next time.